All right, we're going to do, uh, this is the problem from section 2.1.7, I think it's number four, uh, but by popular demand, um, I'm going to walk through how to do this problem so that you can uh, see the step-by-step -step process and then you can apply it to any trust like this. Um, just like anything in math, if you get the system, the process down, um, you can take any problem thrown at you and use that, that process and solve it. So um, first thing, we're going to draw our free body diagram. So um, I'm just going to add to this one, um, but this roller does not have a vertical reaction force because the roller is set vertical. What we do have is uh, a reaction force in the X. Reaction point A in the X. We also have two reaction forces at B. Um, and just simply because I see that our applied load is down 50 pounds, I'm going to just start with an assumption of reaction B and the Y is up because they have to cancel to zero. So uh, let's see. Next, we have our reaction on uh, the pin in the X direction. And at this point, the only other X force we have is uh, here at RAX, and that is to the right. So I'm going to, uh, in this reaction force, call it reaction B in the X. I'm going to point it left because these assumptions, I could point it either direction. If I get it wrong, it'll just be a negative number. But I know uh, if RAX is to the right, then RBX must point left. So. Um, Free body diagram is now done, and we are on to external forces. So uh, in, terms of, in terms of external forces, um, the first thing you do is I typically, I pick the pin as my rotation axis, and I say I want to find the moment about that pin, so point B, and we know that those add to zero. Um, the two things that are going to create moment are the applied force here, 50 pounds, and um, 50 pounds is set a certain distance away. So moment is force times the distance from the fulcrum, right? Like when we had our, our teeter-totters, we had our um, first-class levers, right? So if we said this was 100 pounds of force and this was two feet away, we said that the moment was equal to 100 times the two feet away, or 200 foot pounds. Okay. Um, same thing here. Even though we're not right across from point B, we're still only accounting for that horizontal distance. So it's 50 times 3 to give us the moment caused by that applied force. Um, it's also positive because if we use that right-hand rule, um, that, I'm sorry, it's negative. There we go. If we apply, there we go. Uh, if we apply the right-hand rule, our thumb would have to point away from us and at the screen in order to get our fingers to curl around that rotation axis in the uh, direction of the 50-pound force. Um, the only other moment, because if you look at um, the reaction forces at B, there's no distance away from the rotation axis the force, reaction force B and the Y, uh, it's going to go right at the pin, the, or the, you know, the, the rotation axis, and it won't create any turning forces. Same thing with RB uh, in the X direction. It doesn't create any sort of twisting motion about B because the, the force is applied directly at it. But if you look at RAX, that can create and will create this rotating force uh, that will swivel this this truss around point B. Um, but in this case, um, if you put your thumb at the rotation axis, you have to point it at yourself, um, which we should know by now. That means it's a positive moment, and your fingers would curl in the counterclockwise direction. So um, our moments are the 50 times 3 plus R A X times... And this, again, this is that distance away, just like we have over here on this fulcrum and the for first class lever, um, the distance perpendicular to the force. So the force is horizontal, so the, the vertical distance 
is also 3. So if we have negative 50 times 3 and then Rax times 3, we find that Rax times 3 is equal to 50 times 3. And we can reduce that and find Rax is equal to 50. So kind of maybe over here in the side we can do this. We've got R A X, R B X, and R B in the Y. So we kind of we're gonna kind of box in our answers, right? But we're gonna say um, as we go along we'll fill it in. Sorry, and that's uh, pounds. So what we found was R A and the X 50. And we assumed it to the right. Our answer ended up positive. So we keep the arrow the same direction. Now we're going to say, you know what? Instead of forces in the y, we may as well go right to forces in the x direction because we know they sum to zero. We just found Rax equals. And the only other direction uh, force in, in the external loads in the x direction is the Rb and the x. We assumed it to point left. If we assume it to point left, we're assuming it's negative, which works out nicely because when we substitute, then um, 50 minus RBX is zero. So reaction force B in the X is 50. We'll go ahead and fill our B in the X in. And then the last thing we have is our sum of the forces in the Y. So those equals zero. And the only two forces we have there are the reaction B in the Y direction. And that's, we assumed it's up. And again, you'll see why. But um, in the 50 pounds, that's pointed down. So that's subtracting 50. So R, B, and the Y had 50 to both sides equals 50. So there you go. Everything seems to work out nicely. Everything externally is 50 pounds in all directions. So we have our external forces. We created the first, first step, which was free body diagram. Second step, we did the external loads. And inside the external load step, we do the moment about the pin then we use the information there to do the sum of the forces either in the x or the y typically that's in the y and then after y we do some of the forces in the x or vice versa uh, and by that point we should have solved for all the external forces all the reaction forces so we're we're okay at this point to move forward we're going to um, in fact i'll pause this video and create a second one i'll call this one the external load um, then next video, or if it takes two videos, uh, we'll do the internal loads. So uh, good luck, and uh, I'll start the next video.